was being deluged by agents and magazine people and especially television producers for rights to his stuff, but most of it had been sold already. Like for whom the bell tolls and others. But he he got hold of me and he said, Hotch, listen, these people are descending on me. Would you mind just letting them call you? And if it's and it's probably nothing, and you can just turn them away for me. So uh, I was called by a very fine producer of television, Fred Coe, who was desperate to get rights to a Hemingway short story because he was up against the $64,000 question and he was being killed. So I said, well, Fred, almost all the good stuff's been sold and made already. He said, well, is there anything you like? I said, I like the short story called The Battler. But it's only 10, 15 pages long. You can't make an hour television play out of it. He said, see if, see if Ernest will allow it. So when I went, when I got in touch with him, he said, well, that's really just, it's a fragmental story. If, I, I, I wouldn't trust anybody doing that, but if you'll do it, tell him yes. I said, Ernest, I've never written a, a play for television, especially one as di difficult as this. I have no experience at all. He said, write this one, then you'll have experience. That's one of the great Hemingway lessons in life. You get experience by doing, not by saying you don't have experience. So that was the beginning, that story. It was the beginning of my writing career for television. It was also the beginning of another career. I did sweat over and write an hour version. And it was accepted. They got a fine director for it, Arthur Penn, who had directed many. He, he, he directed Bonnie and Clyde, and he's a well-known director. And Penn had gotten it to um, James Dean. And Dean said, fine, I'll do it. So we're all set. And I'm thinking, oh my God, my first thing, and I got James Dean and Arthur Penn. But Dean got killed, and we were, and this is live television. So there's, there's no cutting around it or anything. So they tried to get somebody to replace Dean of stature. But television stars, I mean movie stars, were afraid of live television. You can't make mistakes. You can't not remember your lines. They did not come from the theater. And they all, nobody would take it on with just two weeks notice. So Arthur Penn said, you've got somebody in the cast. He's got a minor part. He's not a name. I know him from the actor's studio. I think he can do this. And his name is Paul Newman. So they got hold of Newman, who was doing little parts on television. He read the script and he said, I'm not prepared to do a part like this. It's about, it's about a, an ex prize fighter, an ex world champion who's really nuts in the head and disfigured and belligerent. I mean, a very difficult part. 
They had to transform the character that Newman played in the, the commercial break from being the handsome, tuxedo-clad guy he was in the beginning to being the beat-up, ruinous uh, ex-pug that he was. But he grew into the idea, and he did it. So it got him a lot of attention, and MGM was looking for somebody to cast somebody up there likes me, which was the Rocky Graziano prize fight movie. They saw this, and they cast Newman, and he was off to the races. And that was my first and his first, and it was the beginning of my real friendship with Hemingway and my real friendship with Newman.